everyone, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I am super excited to have you here with me today for a fantastic event on my channel. It is something I almost can't believe, I have to pinch myself. It is my interview with Dr. Ken Berry and Dr. Berry is one of the nation's foremost keto experts and he is a YouTuber with about a million and a half subscribers. He has a huge channel and after doing the interview with him, I can see why his channel is so huge. He cares about people. And in fact, that is why he is doing an interview with little old me with only 145,000 subscribers. He really wants to get the message out that keto means good health and that keto can help all of us not only improve our health markers in a lot of ways, it can help a lot of us lose weight. And I am a testament to that. And in fact, in this video, I will show you a picture of myself when I was topping 200 pounds. I was pregnant, but still, even after I gave birth in the picture that you will see, I weighed 186 pounds after the birth. I had a very small baby, but a very big girl because I have a carb addiction, I have come to, to believe. And if you have problems with overeating and just never being full, never being satisfied, always wanting to eat not one piece of cake, but maybe two or three pieces of cake, that was me, then I hope you will stick around for this interview. And it is rather a lengthy interview, and I almost divided it into two videos, but everything he said was so wonderful, and he covers such a huge variety of topics in this video. I just thought it would not do it justice not to give you his interview in full. So anyway, enough of the chat for me. Let's get right into the interview with Dr. Ken Berry. I watch a ton of your videos. I was paleo about four years ago. I was vegetarian, then I went to paleo, and then I ended up coming to keto. I mean, so I have been following you for my whole journey. And I weight lift Monday through Friday morning in my basement, and I put you on so I never make comments almost to any video. I'll listen to video after video, you know, I'll just hit a playlist and listen to them and kind of watch them when I'm weightlifting. But I remember I made one comment and I don't remember what I said on one of your videos. Did I ask for this? Is this what happened? Is this how you contacted me? Yeah, I think you said something about that we, we should do a video or something. Wow. Well, that was very bold of me because I am just <laughs> thrilled to death that you're here. And I just, I mean, I told my community on that community tab on YouTube and they were thrilled to death. They're like, oh my, Dr. Ken Berry, that's amazing. And, Excellent. you know, I just yeah. think it's so wonderful that you want to get your message out even more than it is. I mean, oh, absolutely. I mean, there's so many people out there suffering. And as a doctor, that's what I do. I, you know, and so I could see 40 people a day in the clinic. Yes. or I could help 4,000 or 40,000. Why would I not do that? I have got tingles listening to you talk because I can tell that is why God put you on this earth. That's and it. it you got wonderful. it. Wonderful. And for those of you who don't know Dr. Barry, I mean, number one, you, you got to be in a rock to not know Dr. Ken Barry, but you have to go to his channel and I've linked him below his wife, Nisha. She's gorgeous and darling, and she has a wonderful channel and congratulations on the new home and your one and a half year old baby Beckett. Yeah. And what a name Beckett Barry. Man, yeah. That's a cute name. But anyway, you have to go to see his channel and not just if you're interested in keto, but if you're interested in anything all around health, because he's got a wonderful book and I have read your book. Actually, I listen to it on Audible when I'm doing my weights and it is called Lies My Doctor Told Me and it is all about keto and the high fat lies. But I have to admit, I have a daughter who's a rheumatologist and she's trying to take my son vegetarian, which I used to be vegetarian. And she sees me eating all this high fat stuff and she doesn't say anything, but I can tell she thinks Bethy's gonna have a heart attack like next week. So it's, it's awful. But anyway, getting back to this wonderful man, you have to go to his channel. You really should read his book because if you're believing the standard medical stuff, you know, a lot of it is, is led by big food and big pharma and it's really not the truth. And Dr. Barry, I would love you to introduce yourself to everybody and tell them your journey because you didn't always look as buff as you are right now. No, no, not at all. So I am a family physician. I've been practicing family medicine for over 20 years. And uh, my wife, Nisha, who you mentioned earlier, <clears throat> I would come home from the clinic complaining about some big food commercial or about some big pharma new drug that they were trying to get every patient to take. And she would say, you know, you should start a YouTube channel. And I initially I was like, that's foolish. I'm a doctor. Why would I do that? And so one day I came home from the clinic and she said, Hey, did you have a good day? How many patients did you see today? And I said, Oh, I don't know, 30, 35. 
pretty yeah. good day. She said, oh, that's wonderful. You helped 35 people. I'm proud of you. Wouldn't it be nice if you could help 3,000 or, or 30,000 people? Or a million and a half like you have now. <laughs> and I was like, man, I hate it when you're right. But I guess you're right. I should start a YouTube channel. So I did. And it, it quickly, it kind of blew up really quickly it blew me away. I had no idea that it was going to become ever become this popular. And I think the reason it, I don't think the reason it's so popular is because of me or because of whatever I possess. I think it's because people are hungry for the truth and they're hungry for hope and they're hungry for true help. Not, Oh, here's a handful of pills. I'll see you in three months. Cause that's not really help. Is it? Yeah, no. But if, if I can give you a strategy of eating and a strategy of living, that actually visibly improves your health, visibly. Yeah. So, so when you go to the family reunion next year, nobody's complimenting at you on your, your nice trousers or your nice blouse. That's not even yeah. what they're talking about. They're saying, oh my God, you look great. Yeah. You look younger, you look healthier. What are you doing? Then I know as a doctor, I've done my job for that person. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and when you say people are hungry, Americans are hungry, 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 hungry. And, you know, I was hungry for all of my, from about teenage years on up, I would get home from school and eat bread. I mean, I just craved carbs and I was hungry, hungry, hungry all the time. That led to eating disorders and weight gain and trying to keep it down. When I was pregnant with my first son, I let myself eat the way I really wanted to eat. And I went from 125 pounds to 200 pounds. I yeah. mean, I have a hunger inside me and I think it's fueled by carbs. And when I became a vegetarian for five years, I'm the one, when I ask you, would you mind if I ask about the China study? It was actually me because yeah. when I became vegetarian, I had watched Forks Over Knives. I got my husband to watch it. I got two other couples to watch it. We all became vegetarian and then vegan together for four years. Quite honestly, I was starving because lots of rice, lots of beans. I was always hungry. And we all kind of had a sick, I, I, it sounds weird, but kind of a green sick pallor to it. We did not look healthy. Yep. And so anyway, I ended up, I had arthritis and through a lot of alternative means, I got rid of 90% of it, but I still had 10% pain left. And I kept reading that the paleo autoimmune, which is similar to the keto, not as high fat, but it's, you know, meat and vegetables that it would kick my inflammation. And so I had to gag to start eating meat. I really did at first, but yeah. I did it. And one week later, I had no more pain and I had no more hunger. That hunger that had kept me really with a 200 pound woman inside me was gone. And plus yeah. I could eat as much volume as I wanted. It was great. So anyway, I just yeah. went on and on and on. But, but Americans are hungry, literally hungry. They're starving and they've been doing the low fat thing. It's not working. No, it's not working at all. Uh, actually, now in the United States, only about 12% of the adult population are metabolically healthy. 88% of us have at least one marker, if not more, of metabolic syndrome, which wow. is the precursor to high blood pressure, to type 2 diabetes, to fatty liver, to obesity, to early death, to suffering, to, to years in a nursing home, assisted living, that sort of thing. And yes. so I think, I think you hit on something. Uh, Americans, well, we are hungry in this yes. country and around the world. And it's because we've been duped into believing that we should eat a high carbohydrate plant-based diet. Yes. And, and, and there's no research to support these, these high carb plant-based diets. All the research that seems to support a vegan diet mm -hmm. or a, a diet that's high in whole grains and, and lots of fruits mm -hmm. uh, is, is observational in nature. It's not causative research. It's not a control trial that shows causation. Yeah. It's just epidemiological studies where people fill out surveys of what you ate in the last year. Yeah. And I don't know if, if you can remember, you know, how, how many grapes you've eaten in the last year. No, who, who knows that? I don't know. No. So people yeah. guess, or they try to, answer in a way that that the researcher won't judge them and yeah. then that get all that gets crunched and you can understand right off the bat that's not even meaningful data is it people are yeah. just get they're guessing just like yeah. some of us did on the act which is multiple guess i don't know let me yeah. guess see that's not data and so then yeah. they crunch all that and say oh see 
there's a tiny correlation between eating plant-based and something else, but that yep. correlation never proves causation. But I think you're exactly right about the vegans. And I was going to, one of my examples was going to be, don't look at a vegan who's been, who's just went vegan or has been yes. vegan for a year or two, give them five years and then look yes. at them. Uh, the average vegan after five or more years on a vegan diet has that pasty, almost yes. green, unhealthy. I got power. it. And my husband got it. They're, they're, they're often thin, but they'll always have a little belly pooch. And that's because yes. of the hyperinsulinemia from eating so many carbohydrates. Right. And so I think that true health, the reason that human beings even care about beauty and, and good looks is because it is an evolutionary marker of good health. Yeah. Okay. So when you see an, uh, somebody uh, of a gender that you're attracted to and they're pasty and pale and they got no muscle tone and they've got yeah. a belly pooch, you're not really attracted to that because yeah. That's, that's not good evidence that they can procreate with you and make good genes for the yes. future. That's, that's why we care about beauty and yeah. attractiveness. And so I think you're exactly right. True health, being healthy radiates beauty. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you know, have you seen that channel? Speaking of vegans not looking good, have you seen that channel vegan deterioration? Have you yeah. seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is yeah. terrifying. <clears throat> These yeah. people are like losing teeth. And just yes. their eyes sink in, their yes. face gets longer. It's very strange. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't even, and of course, those videos cherry pick the worst looking yeah. vegans. Of course That's they do. True. But even if you go to the, the channels of some of the very popular vegan influencers, uh, yeah. Dr. Michael Greger is a great example. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look healthy. No. He, he's got, he's, he's very bony. He has no muscle tone and he's got this belly. And it's because he has, he has metabolic syndrome. Now, I would love to check his C-peptide and fasting insulin. I guarantee you they're high. What is metabolic syndrome in, that, in so, layman's terms? So basically, when you eat too many carbohydrates, that causes your blood sugar to spike. Mm -hmm. And when your blood sugar spikes, your pancreas secretes a lot of insulin to pull that blood sugar back yep. down. And so we all know that high blood sugar is unhealthy. We know that. But what yep. many of us don't know, including many doctors and healthcare providers, is that have, having chronically high insulin levels is also very, very unhealthy. It leads yeah. to the markers of metabolic syndrome, which are high blood pressure, mm -hmm. high blood sugar. Uh, it leads to a waist to height ratio of greater than 0.5. Mm -hmm. And so basically you're bigger in the middle bigger. than you should be. Yeah. That's right. And nobody, nobody finds that attractive really. No. Right? <laughs> right. Exactly. And so, and that's, that's three of, and there's five or six markers yeah. for it. But I really think one of the markers should be, is your C peptide elevated or your fasting insulin. If you're mm -hmm. hyper insulinemic, then you're not going to look healthy. You're not going to yeah. feel healthy in the long term. Yeah. So too many carbs just really does not help you at all. No. You know, and it's so funny that you mentioned that because my mother and father-in-law and my father-in-law was, well, he's passed, but he was a pastor and they moved all around Kansas, pastoring Methodist churches. And Darlene was the best country cook ever. And every meal had dessert, but she totally followed the standard American diet. I mean, she really made sure, you know, and she's like, well, you just got to have everything in balance. And she saw me going through these various things. And she's like, well, just, just eat a little bread and a little of this, you know, you can't survive without bread, but they had every lifestyle disease known to man. Yes. Don had two strokes, a heart attack, cancer, and finally a second cancer killed him. And Darlene yeah. had a heart attack in her fifties and then a second heart attack. They both had diabetes. And I feel the same way you do in terms of my channel. I want people to wake up, women to wake up and realize that they don't want to end up in a nursing home or having these grueling medical problems in old age. It's just, <clears throat> it's heartbreaking. And yeah. I don't want that for myself. Yeah. Exactly right. And I, I, it's hard to focus on looking good and feeling good if you're yeah. worried about your blood sugar. Or if you're worried yeah. about uh, your bowels and, you know, where's the nearest bathroom? Yes. Or if you're worried about your skin and, and my skin's just not doing right or my hair, I, you know, my hair's falling yeah. out and it's thin and brittle. I don't understand what's going on. What I'm trying to do around, for the whole world is to help people realize there is a proper human diet. Yeah. And it includes meat. I'm yeah. sorry 
They, if that offends the, uh, a vegan or a vegetarian, but the proper human diet includes meat. It includes yep. fatty meat. Mm-hmm. It includes lots of meat. Uh, and we can, we can break this down as much as you want to or go into yeah. any direction you want to. But the, the, it's terrible advice to tell somebody, oh, just eat everything in moderation. That's yeah. terrible advice. And, and yeah. your, your parents suffered because of that advice. They did. And, and the rest of the family also suffered through their suffering as they suffered, yes, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It tasted it, good, but it wasn't good for us. Absolutely, for yeah. Sure. And so there are specific things that human beings have been eating for over 200,000 years. Wow. And there are things that we never, ever ate until the last 20 years or yeah. the last 50 years. And so when, when health gurus come out and say, oh, you know, you should eat vegetable oil as opposed to yeah. butter or lard or beef that's scary. that's idiotic advice. Yeah. Because first of all, there's never been a long-term study showing that canola oil or soybean oil is safe for human consumption. Yes. They've never done a, a, a causation yeah. study. Yeah. But humans have been eating animal fats. For a quarter of a million years. Yes. So that's probably healthy. So in a nutshell, for those people <laughs> that don't know the basics of the keto diet, why don't you explain that? And then I want to get into something I'm really interested in because my whole family gets on me from time to time about the high fat nature of this. And is it really safe for your heart and all that? And I did read your book and it makes sense, but I would love you to explain it to everybody. First, sure. the nutshell view of what is keto and how do they do it? Sure. So my entire premise is that there is a proper human diet spectrum that all humans of any age and any condition, they should eat somewhere on this spectrum of a proper human diet. The proper human diet does not contain sugar, whether it is definitely added sugar, but also there are many natural foods that are very, very high in sugar like raisins, like grapes, like bananas, honey. like fruit juices, like honey, like fruit smoothies. And, and these mm-hmm. things are promoted as healthy, right? Yeah. And they, they trick people into thinking, oh, I'm going to make a fruit smoothie every morning, not realizing that they're getting a, a three-day supply of carbohydrates from that one smoothie. A proper human diet does not include grains. It does not include wheat, rice, oats, or corn. These things have only been eaten for about the last 10,000 years. For the, uh, the rest of the time human beings have been on this planet, we never ate grains as a staple part of our diet. If yeah. we were starving to death, we might eat a few grains or seeds here and there. But as far as it being the majority of our diet, like it is in the U.S. currently, that's only been for the last few hundred years that we yeah. ate that much grain. You've got to get rid of the grain. And then a proper human diet does not contain vegetable oils, shortening yeah. margarine, Crisco, canola oil, corn oil, any of this stuff, soybean oil, it's new. It's new to the human body. We've only been eating it for a a few decades or maybe a hundred years in some cases, in the case of cottonseed oil. That's not natural. That's not normal. That's not going to lead to better health or uh, better looks. Right, right. So basically the keto diet is vegetables, except for the high starch vegetables. And it is a lot of meat, including fatty meat. It is butter which I love butter. It's awesome. And it's really just avoiding the sugars and the carbs, even the things that they say are healthy, like rice and quinoa and all that stuff. Right. Um, Exactly right. And and so you brought up rice. We could talk about the China study in relation to that. Yes. Uh, People see uh, the the inhabitants of China and Japan and and other uh, Eastern countries. And they say, oh, they're look at how skinny they are, how slender they are. They're very healthy and they eat lots of rice. Well, the thing that you don't know because you don't have access to their lab work, their Mm -hmm. lab results, is that the majority of adults in Asian countries are pre-diabetic, type 2 diabetic, and or Mm -hmm. hyperinsulinemic, okay? I had no idea. Now, they carry their fat differently than you and I. People of mm-hmm. Caucasian descent, of Northern latitude descent, if we eat too many carbs, Belly. we just get, we get fat. But yes. Yeah. Asians, Asian, uh, Asians and Indians don't do that. And so on the Indian subcontinent, they, they might have that little belly pooch like the big right. vegans have, but they just won't get morbidly obese like a white boy like me would. Right. And I used to be, I used to be morbidly obese. I weighed 297 pounds. I can't I believe that. Yeah. Yeah, I was pre-diabetic. I had just a list of medical problems that we can talk about if you want to. And so when people equate slimness with health, 
Mm-hmm. And so let's let's do some real talk here. I don't think you can be metabolically healthy and be obese. I don't think that's possible. Yeah. I think a, a quick check of your lab work and I'm going to show, oh, you're hyperinsulinemic. Right. You've got you've got several markers of metabolic syndrome. But what people don't understand is just because you're slender does not mean you're metabolically healthy. And that's the case with people of Asian and Indian descent. If they're eating too many carbohydrates, they don't get fat like somebody with my DNA or your DNA. Mm -hmm. They do get the belly pooch and then they just develop metabolic syndrome and they get pre-diabetic or type 2 diabetes. And type 2 diabetes in India and the Asian countries is epidemic proportions. It's probably higher than in the United States. But since they look slender, we think that eating lots of rice must be good for you. Right. That's awesome. Okay. In terms of the high fat, and I did have one of my viewers ask about that. She said, you know, they're getting older, they're loving the keto diet, but they're kind of afraid about the high fat nature of the diet. Should they cut it down due to heart disease? What, what are no, your thoughts about that? No, absolutely not. No, it's a great question. So heart disease, it's quickly becoming apparent for people who follow a keto diet or a carnivore diet that eating saturated fat has no negative consequences on human health whatsoever. But what's interesting is that the big uh, agencies, the American Heart Association, the American Diabetes Association, the the, uh, Institutes of Health, they are slowly backing away from their previous stance that eating saturated fat is bad for you. And yeah. the American Heart Association has, has said that saturated fat is not uh, a, a, a dietary thing of concern anymore. They remove the cap of how much saturated fat you should eat a day. Mm-hmm. They don't talk about it anymore. But they now they haven't issued a press release saying, yeah. hey, we were wrong about saturated fat. Yeah. You can eat as much as you want. But yeah. they're backing away from this very slowly. They used to say, oh, if you eat high cholesterol foods, that's going to cause a heart attack. Now, Mm -hmm. all of them have backed away from that. They don't say that anymore. But since they didn't issue that press release to tell the average man and woman, the average man and woman still believes it's bad. Yeah. But it's not. It's it's very ancestrally appropriate to eat saturated animal fat. That's what we've eaten our entire time on this planet. Back 50,000 years ago, when everybody had a six pack and and muscles, right? Yeah. They ate as much animal fat as they could get their hands on. If they were starving to death, they would eat some veg. If the Mm -hmm. fruit was ripe in the fall, they would eat some berries. If if they Mm -hmm. found a honey tree, they ate that. But those were rare events. That's not something that happened on a daily basis. What happened on a daily basis is they ate lots of animal fat as much as they could get their hands on. Mm -hmm. And their incidence of heart disease in the few cases where we're able to find a, a mummified body more than 10,000 years ago, because that's yeah. when the grain started, their, their arteries are squeaky clean. That's amazing. And I had one mm-hmm. viewer, and what was her question? It was, let's see, what was it? Keto long-term, you just answered that. Oh, this was a question, and I actually, I'm curious about this too. If you're on keto, what about a cheat day once a week or a cheat meal? Does that screw you all up totally, or what's your feeling about that? It depends. Uh, so, you know, some people, when it comes to alcohol, they can take it or leave it. They can have a a drink on Saturday night and then not think about alcohol again for six months. I cannot. I haven't drank in 20 years. Yeah. Right. Right. Others of us, if we have a drink on Saturday night, we're probably going to have one on Sunday morning too. And then we go down that road to addiction and problems. And so there are some people eating keto or carnivore. I don't think they should ever have a cheat day. And I'm one of those people, uh, recently, you know, we had the Christmas holidays and yeah. Nisha and her friends made all kinds of keto treats and bars and cakes oh, and nice. pies. And I partook. Okay. Yes. And it, it woke up my carbohydrate yes. addiction and my craving. And it took me two or three weeks before yes. I stopped going to the cabinet at 6 PM going, do we have any of that? Whatever left? I know I'm exactly right. the same way. Yeah. I went through and, a period where I was making the fat bombs and all that. And they tasted yep. so good. But then I was like, oh, I want to make some more. And before you knew it, that's all I wanted to eat was those exactly. fat bombs. And, and I, so that's I for can't handle who, it. Right. Yeah. And many of us cannot. We have a, what some people would call a carbohydrate addiction. And I'm one of yes. those people. If it's I a sweet too. tasting carb, I'm going to eat it. And I'm going to oh, eat it. And I'm going to eat it some more the next day. Now, yeah. others of us 
who are moderators who can have that drink on Saturday night and then not think about alcohol for a month. Yeah. They can probably have an occasional, let's not say a cheat day. Let's say a cheat meal. Meal. Right. And yeah. Because if you're going to cheat the whole day, I mean, who are you who, in the end, who are you really cheating? Yeah. Your, yeah, yourself. exactly. You're, That's you're cheating yourself out of good health. So I think an occasional cheat meal is not a big deal at all for many people. Other people need to watch that very carefully yeah. because they're abstainers and they need to avoid that completely. Yeah, no. And I'm definitely one of those people. And, you know, the more I read about low carb and also addiction to alcohol, I think they're very linked because, you know, alcohol is a sugar and I never could handle that. That's why I quit 20 years ago. And I really yep. can't handle the carbs. It's like, yep. put down those carbs. <laughs> I, yep. I can't and many handle people, them. Many people who have addiction to alcohol, to, to nicotine, to other things, they find that breaking that addiction is much easier when they're eating a low carbohydrate diet, that it's, yes. it's not easy. I didn't say easy. I said easier, right? Yep. Less hard. But yeah. uh, I do think they're intimately connected in the way that they interact with your liver and with your brain. Yeah. And many of us are carb addicts and we just need to look in the mirror and admit that to ourselves. Yes. And isn't it frustrating for you because you know this, you have this, you not only know the science behind it, but you know, from a personal standpoint, how much it helped you. I mean, you went from an overly carb addicted person that was almost 300 pounds to where you are today, totally healthy with all these great healthy markers and all that. Don't you sometimes look around anytime you go out in public and you see all of these hugely heavy people in our society and you're like, gosh, darn it. Why can't yeah. you find, find this out? Yeah. And it makes me, uh, we were just at a restaurant in a, in a nearby city. Last night, as a matter of fact, and we were looking and I would say 70% of the people in the restaurant were obese, if yes. not overweight. And the entire time, Nisha and I sat there while we were eating our, our, our meal, I had a ribeye. She mm -hmm. had, uh, uh, she had shrimp and, and, and salmon, mm -hmm. right? And while we were having our meal, we spent our entire conversation talking about how, how can, what's that person, what's going to resonate with them in a YouTube video so that they can yeah. get it. What, how can I reach that person? How, what does this person, because you know, we're all different, right? Some people, yeah. we don't hear this message, but we do hear that message. Yes. And so that's the, our entire dinner conversation was how can we reach these people? Isn't that awesome? Well, and it's funny. Another one of the questions that I had was, and I didn't really <coughs> understand this question because they said, I'm thinking about doing keto, but how do you deal with the cravings when you go to keto? And to me, when I went to keto, I had a couple days of cravings, but then I had no cravings. So yeah. address that point. They think that there's a lot of cravings on it. Carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms. And that's, that's basically what the keto flu is. A lot of people talk about the keto flu, but if you're, if you're getting plenty of minerals and you're eating lots of nutrient dense food, you're in no danger converting to keto because that's what your body's after with hunger is nutrition, right? Yeah. But carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms are quite severe in some of us. Others of us don't really notice it that much. Yeah. So carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms mirror the same exact symptoms of quitting cigarettes or quitting alcohol. Oh, yeah. They're the same. If you look up what are the symptoms of withdrawing from tobacco, it's headache, it's nausea, it's irritability, it's fatigue. Well, that's, that's keto flu, isn't it? That's, that's the yeah. cravings. Yeah. And the, if you look up alcohol withdrawal symptoms, they're a little more severe, but basically it's headache, fatigue, blurry, blurry, you know, foggy uh, thoughts, fatigue, I can't sleep good. Those are the same symptoms. Mm -hmm. And so for some of us, we have pretty severe carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms yeah. when we go keto. But you're absolutely right. After you've been on the ketogenic diet for a few weeks and you've broken the carbohydrate yeah. addiction, you, the cravings for me, it took maybe three or four months for Nisha. It was two or three weeks and she wasn't craving junk food at all. Yeah, but yeah. everybody, if they stay on keto or carnivore for long enough, the cravings just go away. And now uh, over the holidays, I spoke of earlier, you know, we went to families, uh, houses in celebration yep. and they would have definitely non keto treats. Yeah. Yeah. And I had zero interest in touching yes. those. It's yeah. like, it is yeah. not worth it. It's just like an alcoholic who's been Absolutely. on the, the wagon for a year and yeah. it's New Year's and they go to a bar and there's a beer. Is it yeah. worth it? Is it worth no. it? To, no, it's not worth it. Do not no. touch that beer and do not touch your grandmother's lemon pie either. Abs it's it's about the same thing. It's and you just know, I bad. feel the same way when I see those treats. Darlene's like, you know, don't you want this? And I'm like, no, I really don't. 
You know, no. I think it insults her a little bit because she's like, don't deprive yourself. Well, it's not a deprivation to not have something that's going to make me hungry for the next three days and hate right. myself when I gain weight and can't lose it. Exactly. And I just, I feel so bad emotionally for the women, especially out there, men too, but the women that, you know, they have incredible hunger and they really don't know the reason. And, and, you know, all they need to do is switch to keto even for a week, maybe two weeks. Right. And all that hunger goes. And I've lost 10 pounds since I've been on the diet, but most importantly to me, I no longer crave food. I felt like I was an addict and, yeah. and you feel less than you feel less than when you can't control. Everybody's like, well, just have one cookie. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, a sleeve of Oreos. I'm not going to eat just one. You know, I'll probably eat the whole thing if I start. Exactly. So oh, I, can't, I know I would. Yeah. I can't start. And you so know, let's talk about. Are, oh, go ahead. Let's talk about hunger for a second, because yeah. a lot of people beat themselves up. Hunger is normal. Hunger is natural. Mm -hmm. Hunger is necessary. We we are when when you need nutrition, your body and your brain make you hungry, and that's yeah. okay. That is not negative. That is not a defeat. That's normal when you're truly hungry. But when you're reaching for some carbohydrates every two hours because you think you're hungry, yeah, that's not real hunger. That's addiction. Yeah. And so yeah. it, for some people, it's really hard to tease out the difference between addiction and hunger because they feel the same to us, especially yes. after we've been eating a high carb diet for decades. Yeah. You can't tell the difference between the addiction calling you and true physiological hunger. So right. I want everybody out there to understand it's normal to have hunger and it's normal to want to eat food. Those are that those are yeah. not sins. You are yeah. not a glutton. It yeah. is okay to lust after real nutrient dense food. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. But when yeah. you're when you're craving junk, that's addiction. That's not yeah. true hunger. You you've, you've confused different. the two and it's very easy to do. Yeah, absolutely. And really, there's nothing like a little sirloin steak with butter on it. I mean, it's just really darn good. And yes. so you do have to give up some of the sweet stuff. But I don't know, it's just, it's wonderful. And it's, I lost weight, mm -hmm. even though I really didn't look at portion size, I ate until I right. was full. And I ate really enjoyable food that I loved and bacon, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of bacon. And I feel better than ever. And my weight is 10 pounds less. And, and yep. I don't crave anymore, which is amazing. And that's one of the beautiful things about the ketogenic way of eating and the carnivore way of eating yeah. is that we have hormones in our body and that's what tells you when you're hungry. And that also there are different hormones that tell you you're full. And when you eat nutrient dense food, like mm -hmm. fatty meat, and people think meat's just protein or the yeah. fat's just fat, but yeah. meat is full of vitamins and minerals and all these nutrients that people don't realize are in meat. When you've eaten enough real food, your yeah. hunger hormones literally turn off your hunger. And that's what you were referencing earlier. So I just don't yeah. have that hunger anymore. Yeah. And it's because you have eaten a nutritionally complete meal yeah. and your body is satiated. It's like yeah. your hormones turn off the I've hunger and you're like, boom, I don't have to think about food again for a long yeah. time. And the beautiful thing about keto and carnivore is you don't have to portion control and you yeah. don't have to calorie count at all. Because weight loss ultimately is not a physics problem with the law of thermodynamics mm -hmm. and all that. It's a hormone issue. It's a physiological issue. Right. And when you eat the food that your body's truly looking mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. your hormones turn off that gnawing hunger yeah. and you don't have to feel it all the time. It's amazing. It is amazing. In fact, I did a video, what I eat in a day, and it was very high fat. And I thought I was going to get crucified. But a lot of the women were like, you totally explained who I am that I just, you know, confronted with a piece of cake, I want to eat the whole thing. And they love the idea of a very high fat way of eating, you know, with vegetables, you know, because you've got to make sure you have that. However, you are going more into carnivore. Yeah. Are you, are you doing the, that full time or? Yeah, I actually started it as a one month challenge on I my remember. Facebook page. Uh, and at the end of that month, and so just a little backstory about me to yeah. help you understand. For my entire adult life, I've had severe heartburn reflux. I'm talking about, I used to take two Nexium every day. Oh. When, the, when the drug rep for Nexium would come to the office and give us samples, the yeah. patients didn't get those. I took yes, all those. Absolutely. I took two a day, okay? Yeah, one of the benefits. <laughs> when, right. When I, when I converted from the standard American diet to paleo, 
my heartburn maybe got 20, 30% better, maybe a little. When I converted it to a, a fatty meat, heavy ketogenic diet, my heartburn got 80% better. And I went from taking two Nexium a day to maybe one or two tums a week. Yeah. And I was like, wow. And so I did this carnivore challenge and, and it was just when Sean Baker was getting really popular, the yes. carnivore orthopedic surgeon. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, let's do a month of this carnivore. This crazy Sean Baker's doing yeah. this. And so at the end of that month, I had zero heartburn at all. Wow. Didn't, hadn't taken a Tums in a month had, and hadn't even thought about it. Because, you know, when, when you don't have something, you don't think about it. But when you yeah. ha they have it, you think about it all the time. Yeah. But it occurred to me, I haven't had heartburn in 30 damn days. Whoa, what, what the heck? And so you, I, I said, you know, I think I'm going to just keep doing this. So I ended the challenge on my Facebook page, but I kept yeah. doing it. And it's about 22 months in now, and I'm 99% carnivore. All I eat is different cuts of fatty meat. I eat uh -huh. beef. I eat uh, sheep. I eat goat. Mm -hmm. I eat eggs. I eat mm -hmm. a little bit of, of full fat, real fermented cheese. Right. I'll use a little bit of heavy cream in my coffee here and there. Yep. But 99% of what goes in my mouth is animal-based food. And I have not had heartburn in 20 months. And for anybody listening who has severe heartburn every day, that would be miraculous to yes. go from having severe heartburn every day to no heartburn ever. Right. And that's what that's what that's why I decided to stay carnivore is for the the heartburn benefits. And then yes. also I had lost a ton of weight on keto, wow. but I, I lost an additional 25 pounds with carnivore. Wow. I'm, at, I'm in my lowest weight this morning. I weigh 225 pounds. And that's as low as I've been in the last, since I was probably 32 years old. Wow. Congrats. And that's I'm 52, awesome. by the way, just for full disclosure. Well, and I'm 62, by the way. I've wow. got to beat. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Yeah. You, the keto is working for you. Well, thank you. You know, I look a lot healthier now since mm -hmm. I've gone to keto because yep. as a vegetarian, I don't know. I just looked sick and people were saying, are you sure you're okay? And I, you know, I didn't see it in myself. I thought I still look really good. But my husband, I thought he looked a little green around the gills and he was kind of pale and pasty. It yep. was not it was not a beautiful look. Well, here's what's going on with that. And, and the, so many women out there don't know what I'm about to say. And it's very, very important if you care about your look and you yeah. care about your skin. There are amino acids in meat that you cannot get from any plant. Uh -huh. There are fatty acids in the fat part of meat that yeah. you cannot get from any vegetable. It, it yeah. does not exist in the plant kingdom. You have to have these amino acids and these fatty acids in order to rebuild healthy, beautiful, yes. vibrant, tight skin. Yes. We, we replace every skin cell in our body every three months. So wow. the skin that you have right now, yeah. you have completely made that in the last three months. All the old skin cells are gone. They die off about every three months. Yeah. That's and so amazing. that's why you were starting to get pretty pale and pasty and just yeah. you had no glow when you were a no. vegan is because you were deficient in some of these amino acids and fatty acids yeah. and probably also some of the vitamins and minerals that are yeah. found only in meat. When yeah. you went keto by design, you had to eat more meat and you yes. said it took you a minute to get used to it. Yeah. But when you started eating fatty meat and eggs and real fermented full fat cheese, you started yeah. getting all those amino acids yeah. and all those fatty acids again. And so as your skin cells were replaced, they were replaced with younger looking skin cells, yes. with younger acting skin cells. Yeah. And when your entire skin has been replaced every three months, that's why when people see people who have went keto six months ago, a year ago, and they haven't seen them in a year, right? And they see yeah. them, they're like, oh my God, did you have a facelift? What, what's yeah. going on with you? You yeah. look amazing. Yeah. That's because they are now giving their body the building blocks of beautiful skin. That's yes. what's in fatty meat. And my ladies are going to love you saying that. My ladies you are going to eat this up. You just can't get them from plants. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you find plants from all over the world and you've got... Yeah. Uh, cargo ships and jet planes coming from every continent yeah. bringing you vegetables, you can almost get them all, but still not quite. But yeah. you can eat local fatty meat that was raised just down the road and yeah. get every amino acid and fatty acids you need for the most beautiful skin that you can have at your current age. Yeah, that is awesome. And my women will respond so well to that. 
because that is you know, one of the main tenets of my channel is trying to be as good looking as we can be and healthy, beautiful, you know, really skin that is nourished with oils, you know, good oils, not the bad oils, but yep. you know, all that oil in the meat, it can't help but make us have more beautiful glowing skin. Exactly. Hey, Dr. Barry, let me look at my list and make sure I've gotten sure. all these yeah, questions. Yeah, sure. Hold on just a second. Well, first, how long ago did you start your channel? Because you've got a million and a half people. My gosh. When did you start? It's, uh, about, it's amazing. About three and a half years ago. Ah, oh, my God. Sorry yeah. to said God. That is incredible. You yeah. are really meeting people's needs. I mean, that's well, unbelievable. Yeah, and I think that's what it is, is I'm giving people useful information that when they apply it to their life, it works. And so yes. when something works, people tend to remember that when something actually works, right? Yes. And like you and the vegan diet, four years in, you're like, this is not working for me. No. And yeah, but when you find a way of eating that makes you not only feel healthier, but yeah. look healthier and your, your lab values get better and you reverse chronic diseases, you're pretty likely to tell your family and friends about that way of eating. And yeah. if my video is how you found it, then you're probably going to tell them about my videos. And absolutely. I think that's why it's grown so much is because keto works. Yes, absolutely. Okay, hold on. Let me see if, okay, oh, let's see. Well, they ask about the high fat, which we've already covered. Let's see. Okay, this person said, I benefited so much from Dr. Ken Berry's advice and wisdom, have lost 85 pounds and improved my health and gotten off all my meds but thyroid. Recently, I've not been losing. I'm a one meal a day faster too. Any ideas of how to shift a stall? It's been over four weeks since I've lost any weight and I'm eating very clean as always. Yep. So first of all, it's not a stall until you've had no weight loss for at least six to eight weeks. Oh. It's very common, especially in women, when you're losing weight fairly rapidly for your body to put on the brakes because you got to remember women in the wild, right, thousands yeah. of years ago, you were the guys who had to carry a pregnancy. And yeah. in order to carry a pregnancy, you have to have a certain percentage of body weight, yeah. of body fat, yes. right? You have to have that in order yeah. to successfully have a have a baby at the end of a pregnancy. And so in women's bodies, their, their body freaks out if you lose weight too fast. It's not yeah. that it's unhealthy, but your body doesn't know how old you are right? It doesn't know yeah. if you're 30 or 60. It doesn't know if you've got a pregnancy coming up. And yeah. so in women's bodies, their body will often turn off the weight loss for two yeah. weeks, four weeks, even six weeks. Keep eating keto because you're getting hundreds of other benefits, right? You've yeah. already lost a ton of weight. But also remember that the last 20 pounds uh, always takes the longest. That's yeah. just how, that's how the human body is designed. As you approach your ideal body weight, the weight loss is going to slow down. And that's okay because you've still got all these great victories, both scale victories and yes. non-scale victories. Right. So applaud yourself, congratulate yourself. Please tell me that you're sharing your story with all your friends, friends yes. and family because they need the powerful information that, that you have access to. Yeah. And give it time. Just keep eating the proper human diet, which is a keto diet or a carnivore diet. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get there, but it's just going to take a while. Awesome. So she just needs to be patient. Yeah. And boy, also, having lost 85 pounds, that's crazy. Incredible. That's, that's awesome, right? Also, I have a YouTube video about the 13 reasons why you might stall on a ketogenic diet. Watch that video and make sure you're not making one of those mistakes. But I bet you're not. I bet, it, I bet your body just put on the brakes. And after another week or two, the weight loss will pick up. Again. Yep. A little plateau. Okay, yep. that's good. This person says it's Pearl Chipione, who is one of my great subscribers that I've known for years. I've been on keto for over 40 years due to extreme food allergies. I find eating this way saved me. Obviously, it wasn't called keto when she started, but yep. she was eliminating those things that caused her problems. So she loves it. Okay. It's very common for people to you to go to keto or carnivore as an elimination diet if they have autoimmune conditions. If they have gut conditions like Crohn's disease, irritable bowel, ulcerative yeah. colitis, going on an all meat and all fatty meat diet will make those symptoms completely disappear. Nice. And, and then they can start adding back in one veg at a time to see which vegetables, because there are many plants. If somebody has irritable bowel or Crohn's or ulcerative mm -hmm. colitis, if they eat the wrong plant, they're going to be looking for the nearest bathroom at all yes. times. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And when you, when you find a diet that completely eliminates your bowel symptoms, that's a bit of a miracle for those people. Yeah. And that's what keto and carnivore has done for many people. So many people have, have 
tripped and fallen accidentally into a keto diet because they found that it controls their psoriasis, their eczema, their bowel symptoms, their their uh, even their mental symptoms. There are yeah. tons of people that eat keto for mental health because yeah. it helps their mental health symptoms. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, this person said, I've been doing keto for a month now with OMAD, and I had to look that up, one meal a day, yep. but still have floating stools. I'm concerned about gallbladder issues. Any advice? You may have some gallbladder issues uh, and you might need to see your primary care physician to have that checked out. Keto didn't cause your gallbladder issue if yeah. you have one. Keto right. uncovered it, okay? Years and years of eating too many carbohydrates and not enough fat is what led to your gallbladder condition if you have one. Uh, right. Some people, it takes their bowels a month or two to adjust to the higher yeah. fat level of a ketogenic diet. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's unhealthy or bad. That means that, first of all, your gut bacteria, they have to, you have to raise the level of this one and lower mm -hmm. the level of that one to get used to the keto diet. And once you get the, the right gut microbiome, all of your bowel symptoms are going to go away. But I would see your doctor just to make sure the gallbladder is okay. Now, and you know, you bring up a point, which I absolutely love. And in my work life, I have a chiropractic network and I love my chiropractors. You know, we're not chiropractors, but we credential them for insurance companies. But a lot of people tend to think, oh, somebody who's into keto, they're probably a chiropractor, nothing against chiropractors. But the fact that you're a board certified family practice MD, you had all the medical training, and yet you have come to this as the most scientifically proven based, you know, way to eat is wonderful. And the fact that you say, you know, go to your doctor, you know, keto doesn't sure. necessarily solve everything. No, you, know, you always have to have good conversation with your doctor too. Yeah. Even if you're eating a proper human diet, every now and then you're going to fall off the roof or get hit by a bus. You're yeah. going to need <laughs> modern medicine. And that's that's why we have modern medicine. But the problem with modern medicine comes is when they try to manage chronic progressive diseases that are dietary diseases, yeah. but they try to manage them with medication. Yeah. And so type two diabetes, prediabetes, fatty liver, obesity, uh, all these things are not medical diseases. They're dietary diseases. Yes. And so when you remove the offending fake food, the condition just goes away. It's almost yes. like you were slowly poisoning yourself, but you just yep. didn't know it. And then when you remove the poison, the symptoms of the poisoning, they just go away. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you've really cured your medical problem without a pill, which exactly. is the best way. Because it that is. is another thing about my mother and father-in-law they were each on like 12 med medications. One of them yep. was like $600 a month. They had to find a way to order it from Canada. I mean, they had them lined up and that's no way to, that's no way to end up our lives, ladies. I mean, if no. we can avoid that, that would be a wonderful thing. And when you're taking that many pills together, if you're taking three or more prescription medications, then you are absolutely having a, a side effect. There's no way you can't be. You may not realize it, but anytime you take three or more prescription drugs, you are having side effects. Yes. Either internal or external. You may not know yeah. it, but you are because there are so many chemicals in there that the interactions, they don't just add up one plus one plus one. They yeah. multiply and they're exponential. And so for somebody taking 12 different medications yeah. like your parents were, they were having a list of side effects. And probably in reality, they were taking some yes. of the pills to treat the side effects from yeah. some of the other pills. That's probably and the truth of that. When I asked Darlene, why are you taking each one of these? She did not know. Right. I and mean, that's the other big thing. Yeah. And doctors are great at prescribing medicines, yeah. but they're not really that good at de-prescribing medications. Yeah. And yeah. so anybody who decides to do the keto diet or the carnivore diet, if you're taking a blood pressure pill or three or four, yeah. you're going to have to slowly decrease those and stop those as you yeah. continue the keto or you're going to get your blood pressure is going to go too low. You may pass right. out. And so you need to find a doctor who's comfortable with de-prescribing. So right. as your type two diabetes gets better, your doctor can help you lower the dosage and then ultimately stop the pill. If you're taking medication uh, for an autoimmune condition, as you eat cleaner and cleaner keto, maybe even carnivore, you're not going to have the flare-ups of that autoimmune yeah. condition. You're not going to have the severe flare-ups. And so you probably won't need as much medication. You got to find a doctor who's comfortable unprescribing you yeah. from prescription medications. Okay, we've kind of gone through this already, 
but she says, hi, Beth, this is amazing that Dr. Barry is doing a video with you. I watch your videos and I love Dr. Barry and his wife, Nisha, and their adorable baby. I also watch their live chats on keto carnivore. I'm curious about Dr. Barry and the carnivore diet. Please ask him to explain that diet, how long he's been on it and what he, what his experience has been on it. However, you did go through that. So maybe we've already done that one. Yeah, well, I can just sum it up again. I've been uh, eating a, it's an animal-based diet. So only yeah. I only eat things that comes from animals. Right. Mm -hmm. And right now, last uh, la night before last, we had pigtails and uh, hog neck. OK, I live in Tennessee. That's I was right. born in and, Knoxville, and so I'm familiar Nisha, with all that. <laughs> Nisha just showed me in the fridge. She she went to the grocery and now we have pig's feet. We're going to cook yes. those in the Instapot. Yeah. I eat all, all cuts of fatty meat, mainly from beef. I feel best when I eat beef. Me too. Also, what, lamb is wonderful for me as yeah. well. Goat is, is wonderful, but it's hard to find. Uh, pig and chicken are okay for me, but I don't feel as good if I eat yeah. a lot of pork or chicken. Yeah. I feel my best when I eat beef. Me too. I've been do doing it for about 20, 21 months now. I have yeah. no intention of changing. Yeah. Uh, on the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, my birthday, anniversary, I cheat on carnivore with keto. So yeah. <laughs> I, that, that, that's a cheat for me is to go back to, to yeah. keto. So I'll eat some, I'll eat some, like some uh, roasted Brussels sprouts or something like that. That's mm -hmm. my cheat mm -hmm. meal. But the, on a daily basis, I eat meat. That's what I eat. And yeah. people will say, Oh, how do you get your vitamins and minerals? That's people who don't understand just how much nutrition is in meat. They don't understand yeah. that. They think that all the nutrition is in plants yeah. and that meat is just protein. But yeah. nothing could be further from the truth. Yeah. Okay. Well, and you've really answered this one too, but this person says, hi, Beth, love your channel and keto. My husband and I are 70 and hearing a lot in the community about higher protein, lower fat at our ages. <clears throat> We've been keto for several years, but wish to lose a bit more weight, higher protein, lower fat. Yes or no. Love the berries. No, uh, let's, let's talk about this. Cause I think this is an important question. Yeah. First of all, if you're eating a high fat, moderate protein, very, very low carbohydrate diet, I'm happy for you. Yeah. If you're, you're eating a high protein, moderate fat, very, very low carbohydrate diet, I'm also happy for you. Okay. I don't care if you eat high protein or high fat. I just want you to eat a very, very low carbohydrate diet because that's right. where the bulk of the health benefits are going to come from. A good friend of mine, Dr. Ted Naiman, is a family doctor in Washington State. He wrote a book called The PE Diet, and he is a huge advocate of a high protein, moderate fat, still very low carbohydrate diet. Mm -hmm. And that works very well for some people. Mm -hmm. Other people like me, I don't know about you, but I do best with the, the highest fat ratio that I can get. I like the fat. <laughs> yeah, I just do better. I enjoy my meals more and I feel more vibrant, more alive yes. when I'm eating a higher fat diet. So yeah. if anybody out there, if they're worried about eating high fat and they want to try a, a 90 day trial of a high protein, moderate fat, I'm a hundred percent fine with that. I think that's yeah. a great experiment to run. You're right. not going to hurt yourself with it. Their mm -hmm. protein is good for you. Not bad for you. Mm -hmm. Fat is good for you. Not bad for you. Yeah, the yeah. only thing that's bad for you is eating too many carbohydrates for yeah. your personal physiology. Right. And you know, it's funny you mentioned that about the high fat because I also love high fat. And this is so weird because I always weighed 130 to 135 when I was a vegetarian <clears throat> and I was always kind of puffy, you know, just, I didn't feel like I looked my best. Right. And then I lost down very quickly, 10 pounds to 120 and I'd like to be there. But one thing about the keto diet, which women will probably think this is a sad problem that I have or not a sad problem, but I get down to 117, 116 and I'm getting to be gaunt. So I add as my treat a lot more butter on steaks and all of that mm -hmm. because it yep. is weird. But ladies, if you're not hugely overweight to start, you will get to where you're a low weight and you'll maybe go a little too low. So you'll have to buff it up with some more fat or something like that. It's a yeah. weird problem to have. I've never had that problem in my entire life. It was usually pushing the scale up to 140 and being worried about that. This is a weird problem to have. And if you're getting, if you're getting a little bit underweight, yeah. Adding more fat to your diet will help you get back up to your ideal body weight. Yeah. But I, I have issued this challenge numerous times and I'll issue it to your listeners as well. Mm -hmm. I defy anyone to eat enough fat to actually get fat. Wow. It's not, it, it doesn't work that way. Your, yeah. your hormones will turn off your satiety. You will not be hungry and you won't be able to force another bite of bacon yeah. down. 
But if, if you if, if I made that same challenge with eat carbs and try to get fat, everybody would win. Oh, that's what absolutely. makes you fat is too many carbs. Yep, absolutely. Well, I only have one more question and it's an easy one. And then I just want to recap on the things that you think are important to tell my viewers. And <clears> ladies, if you like this video, well, I'll put all kinds of links to Dr. Barry and Nisha's channel below. And I hope you will go see those and also share this with your friends because he's got a fantastic message. And I am here personally to say it works. And I was the biggest food act addict of all. And I'm able to really feel like I don't even have that problem now following this diet. Okay, and this is an easy question. What vegetables are included and which ones are to be avoided on the keto diet? Also, what tips does Dr. Barry have to help us do the keto diet successfully? Maybe that's a good last one. Yeah, absolutely. So the vegetables that you want to eat, first of all, I truly believe that if uh, it, let's talk about a plate, your dinner plate, right? <clears throat> if you're eating keto, right, at least half of your plate, if not more, is going to be covered with fatty meat. And so you're going to have half a plate to a quarter of a plate of veg. And I've got a YouTube video. It's one of my most watched videos. It's got 3 million views about the seven keto veggies that you can eat as much of as you want yeah, when I've you start that. keto, when you start, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you uh, you can't eat as many of these as you want forever or your, your weight loss will stall at some point because you'll be eating too many carbohydrates yeah. at that point, right? But when yeah. you first start keto, there's seven veg and they're delish, mostly the brassicas. Vegetables you want to avoid is anything that grows under the ground yep. because they're going to be starchy, right? Yep. You want to avoid anything that has a high fructose content or a high sugar content. Mm -hmm. There are some vegetables that just have way more sugar than other vegetables. Nisha and I, we use a little garlic or a little onion as a flavor. You don't have to eat the whole onion. Just a little yep. bit of mints is all you need to give the whole dish flavor, right? Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. though they're, they're root vegetables, you're not going to use the whole thing. But if you're trying to eat potatoes, even sweet potatoes, remember paleo, all the yeah. sweet potatoes, you're just not going to lose the weight that you want to lose. Right. So you want to stick with above ground, non-starchy, low carbohydrate, low sugar vegetables. And there's a pretty long list of yeah. those. And I talk about them in that YouTube video. Thank you so much for doing this video. Uh, I, I was totally pleasure. surprised to get in my email box something from Dr. Ken Berry. I mean, that's amazing. And the fact that you would do this, because I only have 145,000 subscribers in my three years, and it makes only. me feel a little unsuccessful that you have, in the same amount of time, he has 1.5 million. But that well, shows that that message is really necessary, and it's helping a lot of people, which is wonderful. Do you have anything you want to add to my viewers out there or to people about keto? Every bite of food that you put into your mouth matters. Every bite of food is either a net positive for your health or it's a net negative for your health. Uh, and all, you, you live with you and you suffer from what you suffer from. You also thrive and benefit from what you benefit from. Yeah. So every day that you make better choices and you don't have to go 100% keto today. But if you just the next time you go to the grocery, you buy some above ground non-starchy non vegetables and you buy some cuts of fatty meat that you're not used to eating and you leave off the sugar, the added sugar crap, and you leave off the grains, you just improved your health by yeah. that amount, right? And so it can start just that simply. And every time you go to the grocery, you're going to not buy some junk and you're going to buy more real human food. And when you've got a certain percentage of your diet on the proper human diet spectrum, your health is going to start to turn around and you're going to start to feel things and do things that you thought that you might never feel and do again. And what a wonderful message that is because the message on my channel is in our second half to try to make it our best half and to learn from the mistakes we made in the first half. And ladies, I made every dietary mistake known to man and finding the keto has been a solution for me. And obviously for probably millions of people out there, Yep. And in large part, thanks to people like Dr. Ken Berry. And thank you so much, Dr. Berry. It's, it's been, been a wonderful. pleasure. You're, you're a beauty, I can tell, inside and out. Thank and uh, I, I'm, I'm here if you have questions or if you ever want to do this again. Any way that I can help more people, that's, that's what I'm put on this earth to do. Awesome. Well, thank you so much and have a beautiful day. Thank you so much. Take Will care. Do. See you later. Bye.